Hello, this is Kai, and I will be uh, doing assignment two, problem three. And this one's called Find the Range. Basically, what you need to do is create a program where it starts off by saying this program finds the largest and smallest numbers, and it will take your input. And basically, uh, from the inputs, it will calculate what is the smallest number and um, what is the largest number, and it would print that out. Now, to terminate this program, we would have to use uh, a sentinel value, so we would set the sentinel value to be zero. So if we put in zero, the program will execute, uh, will terminate the loop, and it will print out the smallest and the largest value. So what would happen if the uh, if there was only one number input? So let's say that it was 11, and then we hit zero then the smallest and largest number should report 11 as the smallest and largest because it's the only value that you can it's the only value there uh, or what else, what if the user enters the sentinel on the very first input then what would happen well then you would want to say that there have there are no values that have been entered uh, entered and it should say that if it was that special case. So let's go ahead and sign this program. We'll first start off by opening the find range and again you can see the standard it's got the package, it's got the program uh, run file and then we would need to put in our uh, find range. So we want to find the uh, range equation okay and uh, basically we'll put it in here first so range equation and we want to create a method so private and the question is do we want it to return anything um, considering that there is nothing that is being output uh, being uh, put out other than the results we don't need to create an output. So we're going to put void in this case. So private void range equation and it will accept our value. So let's say value just because I want to feel a little different today. And notice how with the void it does not have any errors here so because there's nothing that's being returned. Okay. Um, there is red squiggly lines here that's because we need to have a value that we're putting in. Okay. And again, uh, do we need to keep an updated uh, account of that value? Uh, no, we don't need to keep the updated account of that value, but we do need to keep uh, an updated account of the smallest and largest numbers. And that, we can put that initialize outside. So private uh, int smallest, and we'll set that as zero and we'll do private int largest and we'll set that as zero and um, again for practice we'll go ahead and put um, value here so int value and we'll set that as zero as well okay so what we'll have the method do is modify the value of the smallest variable and the largest variable and then and we'll have it printed out. And just because um, we want to get a little bit more complicated, we'll go ahead and create a method that would uh, display, would print the results so that, um, yeah, we can have something there just to say, oh, it's printed. So print result right after. Okay. And again, this is something that's going to happen continuously until the sentinel value is inputted. So we need one more variable here that we got to initialize, private static file int, and we are going to implement the sentinel. And that sentinel value will be zero. So as long as the numbers that we're inputting are not zero, then uh, it would continue to loop. But once we hit that zero, it's going to kick out of that loop. Okay. Alrighty. Alright, so what we want to do is go ahead and create our range equation. So the easiest thing to do is, first of all, uh, we want it, the value of our range to, we want to enter the value of our range. And notice how this time I'm not going with the uh, 
the method first because I'm still not quite sure how I want to um, uh, inter have it interact with the other part of the program. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with the easy part this time, a little different. So print ln and we say that this program finds the largest and smallest numbers. Okay, pretty easy. And we'll put in the while loop while uh, value is not equal to our sentinel. Okay, so it will keep doing this until it hits zero. We want it to call that method. So while value is not equal to sentinel, we're going to call that method. Okay, and um, the first thing that we also want to do is also specify that specific case of when zero is hit first. So if that actually happens, if zero hits first, then we want to go ahead and um, show that. So I guess what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and have the first input as a separate part of the method. So what I mean is when they ask for the number the first time, we're going to have it called separately in the run method. So it's going to grab that first value. Um, yes, first value. So let's go ahead and say <clears throat> um, value is equal to readint. And they have a question mark there, so question mark. And then boom. And then we're going to go ahead and put that value into the smallest and the largest, like so. And again, if you have another algorithm of how to do this, it's fine. Uh, this is just, again, one way of uh, calculating this. Now, once the value of smallest, uh, value is equal to smallest, value is equal to the largest, we want to take into account that unique case. So we'll put if um, uh, value is equal to sentinel. We're going to go ahead and uh, print out um, there have there are no values entered and then it will go ahead and uh, ex uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, close this program. So we'll have it so that um, it will kick out of this program once it sees that. So to kick out of that program, um, yeah, it's just going to say there are no values entered. Okay, but what if there were was a value entered? Well, we want that to be the rest of the situation, right? So the rest of the case would be else and then while value is not equal to sentinel it will do this whole entire thing so when the value is equal to sentinel it will print there are no values entered but if there was a value entered it will go ahead and switch to the else case and go through that for loop uh, while loop uh, when values are equal to something so there you go we fixed the problem so in the first case no values second case when there is values. And so since we established how we're writing the, uh, the program, I can go ahead and uh, put in the rest of the uh, algorithms into the range equation to complete the rest. So the idea is we want to replace the value if it's the smallest value. So let's go ahead and say if the value that we receive, if that value is um, less than or equal to the smallest, then what we're going to do is we're going to have to say that the smallest is now equal to that value that we got. Okay, And we're also going to put else, all right, else if, the other condition, else if the value is greater than or equal to the largest, then in that case we're going to have the largest replaced with that value. Okay? 
So it would keep on replacing values until that uh, sentinel is reached. Now, um, what we want to be careful is, is that uh, if the value um, is zero, we don't want that to be uh, put into our method. So if that does happen, okay, else if else if uh, the value is equal to zero, we want to um, break out of this. We want to uh, we we don't want that value to change any of our values. Does that make sense? Um, so we're going to say else if our value is equal to zero, then we're going to have it do nothing. Okay. So just leave a little blank there so it would do nothing. All right. And that would be for that case. And then here, going back to the loop, we have while value is not equal to sentinel, it would do our method. Well, what we are missing from here is uh, more input for um, for our for our, our checking. So what we need to do is put in another readint right inside here. Okay, so we'll put it right in here. And so what's going to happen is the first time it picks up the value, it's going to read that value, and then we will put that value into our range equation to see if it's smaller or larger than our values. And then it's going to read a value again, and then it will recycle over and over again. And um, I just realized it actually, you know, we really didn't need this else if, because the fact is, is that since I put the value after the calculation of the range equation, that zero will not hit the um, range equation because when it reads zero and it goes back to the beginning, it will uh, break out of that while loop. So that's not a big deal. But you know, if you're not sure, you can always put that in there. But now looking at our calculation, that actually isn't necessary. And then the last thing that we want to do is be able to print out the um, the result. Okay. So to print out the result, what we're going to do is we're going to say print ln smallest. Okay. And that would be the smallest value. And then we're going to also print ln the largest. And that will be the largest value, like so. And after you do that, you're done. Okay, so this is how the program looks. And it's not too complicated, just uh, make sure that the logic is there. And then we'll go ahead and uh, run it. So I hit run, and we're going to go to find range. And it's going to ask for this program finds the largest and smallest numbers. So we're going to hit 11 the first time, and 17, and 42, and 9, and negative 3. Oops, that's not negative. Negative 3, 35, and then finally sentinel of 0. And you can see that this says that the smallest value is negative 3 and the largest is 42. So that matches. And then what we want to do is check for the other two cases. So the other two cases would be if you only submitted one number and then hit the sentinel. See that it says smallest is 11, largest is 11, so that checks out. And then the other case of when we put zero, it will say there are no values entered. So again, um, make sure that it works for all cases before you submit your solution, but uh, that's how it works. So this is a solution to assignment two, problem three. Um, if you like this video, please uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.